Oof, this is going to be a doozy. Today we're talking about how to overcome or mitigate a fear of visibility as you're building your brand. I don't want to minimize this fear because oftentimes it's coming from a very real place. It's coming from limiting beliefs that we developed when we were a child. It may even be coming from trauma, small trauma or really big trauma that makes showing up and being visible and putting yourself out there for criticism and critique really scary. And it can also be systemic. It can be that our voices have always been quieted in some respect and that being vocal, being unapologetic and showing up just feels uncomfortable. Or maybe we're just not practiced. All of this is so valid and such a very lived experience for so many people. And, and logically, we know that if we want to serve, if we want to impact, if we want to be a leader, if we want to show up and help people, it takes getting visible. Because if people don't know that we exist, then we can't help them. They won't know that we can help them. So it's really important work to figure out how to overcome this fear of visibility that can plague so many of us. Welcome, if we haven't met, if we haven't had the pleasure, my name is Kay Putnam. I'm the psychology driven brand strategist. I share most weekly videos on branding, entrepreneurship and psychology. So if those are interesting to you, hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe, and the bell will notify you whenever I release new videos. And I'm actually going to be sharing 10 different techniques on how to overcome or mitigate this fear of response or responsibility, <laughs> the fear of visibility. There we go. And I invite you to take what resonates, maybe try one or two or three of them, and disregard the rest. So I wanted to give you as many different angles that you can look at or attack or address this limiting behavior so that you can overcome it and help the people and serve the world in the way that you want to serve and help and impact. It's tragic and hurts my heart to think about all of the people that have it in them, the desire to serve and to help people but there's this roadblock, this mountain of actually letting people know that stands in their way. So I hope that one of these 10 strategies will be the key for you to unlock some, some level of new expression. Because let me just acknowledge, this fear of visibility never goes away. Every time that we are faced at with a moment of change or risk, or stepping out into new spaces, it's going to feel uncomfortable. Whenever I get on a new podcast or step on a new stage or launch a new product, I am immediately sent back to like all of those voices. And I heard on a podcast recently, like that, that chorus of, of negative talk in your head that we can call the shitty committee, pardon my language because they're not helping. They're not helping this larger purpose that we intend to make in the world. So let's dive in with that context set. Okay, so the first thing that I like to do always, whenever I am getting stuck in that spiral, of like, oh my gosh, like, what are people going to think of me? Or look at that girl over there, like she grew to X figures in only one year and it took me the last, like seven or eight to not even reach that level of revenue. Who am I to show up? What am I doing? So whenever I'm in that death spiral, like listening to the shitty committee and getting stuck and not taking action, I shift my focus from me, 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 oh me, look at me, to thinking about the people that I intend to help. Because if I don't show up, if I don't teach, if I don't create this course, if I don't pitch myself for being on a new podcast, 
all of those people that I could have touched in some way, taught in some way, or impacted and improved their lives in some way, they don't get that benefit. So you have to think about like your most ideal client, your most raving fan, and how much you've impacted their life. Maybe that's not even in business. Maybe that's just somebody in your life, like a best friend or a coworker or something like that. Like think about if you never made that impact, what their life would look like and have that conversation with yourself about your business. If you don't show up, you are indirectly letting somebody down because they don't get to benefit from your genius. So shift the focus from you, 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 me, 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 to that human that you want to help and show up for them. Work through your own discomfort to help them. Second, which one may or may not be helpful is to think through your own worst case scenario. So like, what if you do show up? What if that hater comes and accuses you of stealing all of your content, of being a second rate version of somebody else, of accusing you of not being smart, of being a fraud? Like, what if that happens? I mean, it's probably gonna suck. It's probably gonna feel really uncomfortable, but that doesn't mean the rest of your work or the people that do value your work aren't getting that benefit like we talked about in strategy number one, right? So maybe if that happens, then we can either create some new boundaries, I might be forecasting some future strategies, but maybe there's a way to mitigate that worst case scenario. A far-fetched example when I was first starting my business was like, oh my gosh, like what, what if I go bankrupt? Like what if I rack up all of this debt and this doesn't work and I'm just like stuck and I haven't done anything and I failed? Like, well, I probably have to get a job really worst case scenario, we could probably move in with like my in-laws, maybe go <laughs> camp out in their basement, or maybe I could start a different business, but do it differently. Like once you come up to face whatever your worst case scenario is, you can actually start to think about what you would do to fix that or to avoid that or to deal. And things that you shine a light on suddenly become less scary. It becomes less like the monster in the closet and more like the thing in front of you that you can deal with. So think through your wildest, craziest fears and think about what you could do if that actually did happen. Third strategy for overcoming your fear of visibility is to focus on taking brave baby steps. Often we get up so caught up in our own minds because we want to be the next Marie Forleo. Like we want to be the next Oprah or Tony Robbins. And we're seeing this massive audience that they've built and all of the raving fans. And that feels really scary. But the reality is when we're first getting started, we're gonna have the smallest audience that we've ever had. and the other reality is we're probably actually not going to be very good at talking on video or writing posts that get a lot of attention. Chances are there's going to be some learning curve. So you have to celebrate the brave baby steps you take along the way. Maybe you just show up each day and share anything, just anything like your food or your child or your I don't know, your desk or whatever it is, like just showing up, even if it's not strategic, even if it's not profound, can be your brave baby step. So celebrate all of the baby steps that you're making because they are so important. And that's how you climb Everest. Those slow, methodical baby steps. So celebrate them and just focus on what is my next step right now. My next step right now. My next step right now. Don't focus a year from now or five years from now or 10 years from now, just stay present and celebrate those brave baby steps. It can even be a little challenge for yourself to seek out deliberate discomfort each day. I think Tim Ferriss talks about in one of his books about just trying things like challenging himself to go up and ask a stranger for money or to pitch himself, or like just to reach out to somebody ridiculously famous to see what happens. Put yourself in those stretchy 
situations as much as possible because that discomfort becomes less and less and less over time. So brave baby steps in the direction of deliberate discomfort and then celebrating yourself whenever you make tiny, tiny progress. Strategy number four is to systemize it. And this is actually a way of creating distance between yourself and the fear. And I absolutely do this. So instead of me showing up live all of the time, some people like thrive in those live situations. Some, but especially when my audience was smaller and nobody would show up and this still happens to me to this day, I'll start a live Facebook video and like literally nobody's there and it throws me off my energy. It feels really weird, but we could systemize it. Meaning we can batch create content in advance. We can use a tool to automate and automatically post content. We can write emails in advance and have them automatically go out to people. So remove yourself from the equation from self-sabotaging. Do it in advance when you're not feeling the intense fear or like when you're separated from the, not the consequences, but like just the vulnerability of it. I'm sitting here by myself recording this video. I'm not the actually the one that's hitting publish on YouTube. That's actually my one of my virtual assistants. Um, content managers, excuse me, she's so much more than a virtual assistant, but my content marketing manager, who is brilliant, is the one that is writing out the notes, scheduling this, posting it, sending it to my email list. So I've created a system using team and also some automation that removes me from some of the scariness or some of the day-to-day -day anxiety of publishing content, of being visible. So think about how you can do that for yourself, whether or not you have team. Strategy number five to deal with the fear of visibility would be to set boundaries. Like I, <laughs> spoiler alerted earlier. So take responsibility for your own actions and your own reactions by setting boundaries that make you feel safe. Some examples of boundaries as it relates to visibility might be setting times when you're going to say like check comments or check your DMs and then times when you're not so that you can be in the best state of mind possible to go in and potentially receive feedback that you don't want to hear or see. You can also use your block button really liberally. You're building your brand platform. So if somebody is being hurtful or combative or something that doesn't feel safe, block that person, move on, continue to focus, like we said in strategy one, on the people that do need your help. Let go of the people that are hurting you. We don't need to take that type of abuse. Also, really importantly, when you're putting yourself out, out, out there, out into the interwebs online, take time to think about what you're going to share what parts of your life you're going to share and how you're going to protect your privacy. So take the time to comb through your personal Facebook page before you start getting really visible and take out things that people might use to either like know exactly where you live or to like call you on your cell phone, like take out those identifying details that doesn't feel safe to share and have a boundary around that. Perhaps have some boundaries about what you are and aren't going to share in relation to your family and your kids or your home or your life, these types of things. Maybe you're going to set up a PO box instead of having your home address on the bottom of your emails that go out. So just take thoughtful and proactive steps to protect your identity, to stay safe in this online world so that you can feel confident in being visible in attracting a large audience. Strategy number six is to normalize both the act of getting visible and the fact that everybody feels some fear and some resistance and blocks around it. So a great way to do this is to be in group programs where other entrepreneurs are who are also getting visible, who are doing this on a regular basis so that you can model them, they can be your muses, you can see that they are out there, that they are seeing results and success through those visibility actions and that they're okay. 
And then it's also helpful to know that literally everybody feels imposter syndrome. Literally everybody feels some resistance to putting themselves out there. Literally Aretha Franklin, no, was it, who was it? No, it was Maya Angelou. I was just watching the, the uh, trailer for the new Aretha Franklin video or movie, which I'm really excited to see, but it wasn't her, it was Maya Angelou. She said after her 11th book, or maybe she was publishing her 11th book, she said, I am so afraid that people are going to find me out. Maya freaking Angelou. <laughs> really? Barbara Streisand was commenting on, I, I don't know how many movies she'd been in, but just that, why would anybody want to see me in another video? And she's like an icon and incredibly successful. So if those women are feeling those types of fears, of course we're going to too. It's human. It is so human. So normalize both the feelings. It's just part of being human. And then also normalize the taking action. So find your group, find some people, find your humans that are doing something brave, taking those brave baby steps so that you can be inspired by their action taking. Strategy number seven, and I borrowed this one from Brene Brown, is to remember whose opinions matter. So in a couple of her books, she shares that she has a one inch by one inch little piece of paper. And on that piece of paper, she's allowed to write the names of the people's whose opinions actually matter to her. So I, it was like people like her family, so her husband, maybe some mentors, or maybe a, you know, a treasured peer or two, and that was it. Of course, other people are going to share their opinions because we can't stop them from doing that, but she decided in advance who's actually mattered to her and who she was going to listen to. And this doesn't mean that we want to shield ourselves from all criticism ever, but we want to take that criticism from people who want the best for us and who know us well enough to know what our vision is. So decide who you're actually taking that criticism or feedback from and feel free to disregard it from everybody else. Strategy number eight for dealing with the fear of visibility is not to forget, going back to very basic energetic hygiene. So when we're in a state of distress, not the eustress that we're talking about with the deliberate discomfort of challenging ourselves, but when we're in distress and perhaps we haven't slept or we haven't eaten or we are experiencing some like personal turmoil, all of that makes showing up online and being a leader feel impossible. You're just adding one more thing to a spiral downward. So if you're not feeling well, you're not going to feel sparkly and magnetic and energetic. So go back to the basics. Make sure you get a good night's sleep. Eat something. Drink your favorite bevy. Had some yerba mate. Oftentimes it's a black espresso, but I had you know, lots of water this morning and some yerb to boost my, my natural effervescence. But whatever you need to do, and maybe that's some of like just mental self-care as well. So maybe doing some meditation, some journaling, sitting with yourself in some way, or working out and just getting into your body. And again, being present with the current moment, as opposed to sitting in the anxiety of the what ifs or the future. That is incredibly, incredibly powerful. So energetic hygiene, take care of yourself. Strategy number nine is to save all of your kind words and like testimonials, raving fans, any messages that you get like that, put them in one place, whether it's maybe a folder in your phone of screenshots or a folder in your inbox, because our lovely brains, even if we get nine pieces of glowing reviews and one disgruntled or short message that we take the wrong way, of course we're gonna remember that one. We know that's how our brain works. So make a conscious effort to collect all of the positive feedback or all of the kind words that people have said to you or about you. 
or you could even go <laughs> into the physical world and put together like a three ring binder of an I Love Me book of all of your accomplishments and things that you're proud of and return to that when you need to do that. Another way to do this, and I, um, I borrowed this one or I heard this one on the Reboot podcast about confidence. It was a woman's conversation about confidence. She, one of the coaches there recommended having a sheet of paper where you write your defining moments. Moments where you called on some courage or vulnerability or grit or resilience or strength and how that resulted in something amazing. And write those short stories on a piece of paper and perhaps even keep it in your desk drawer. So whenever you're stepping into a moment that feels vulnerable, you can quickly remind yourself of how amazing you actually are. So save those kind words. And our last strategy for dealing with the fear of visibility is to question the source. This one may require a therapist and I am not one, but just similar to how we're only taking feedback from those people that really, really know us and really matter to us in our life, trace back the thread of those words that are coming from your shitty committee and ask yourself, where is this coming from? I can still distinctly remember Back when I was in elementary school, there was a girl that I was spending time with and she hated that quote, <laughs> I walked around like I was stuck up with my chest out and my butt out and I was, I don't know what the word was, but I thought I was full of myself essentially. I, I must have been 10 and I still remember this. <laughs> so there is there's these voices there's that voice there is this idea of not being showy or not being dramatic that i picked up in my childhood and those can feel really really vulnerable if we let them but we can remember that that's not our current experience so there you go 10 strategies to deal with the fear of visibility i hope one of these is useful for you let me know which one resonates with you the most in the comments below